So let us see how we deal with uh, bit flip errors in the quantum scenario. In this case, we have superpositions and we have to make sure that uh, we are going to recover the quantum state, um, which is in general not only 0 or 1, but a superposition of 0 and 1. Um, so I'm going to take you through this uh, circuit where I'm going to uh, show you how to encode uh, a qubit into three qubits, then we'll talk a little bit about errors and about uh, the error syndrome, the re try, you know, how do we find out which error happened and then how we recover the encoded state and then uh, how we decode it back into the original state. So first, um, you are given an unknown quantum state. So generic form is alpha zero plus beta one. Then you encode this unknown quantum state. You don't know what it is, but what you do, you just bring two other qubits in state zero, and then you apply this two control not operation. So this is a classic example of isometry. You have a quantum state of one system, you bring another system, in this case two qubits in state 0, 0, so that's like isometric embedding, and then you apply a unitary operation so that your original state, in this case alpha 0 plus beta 1, is embedded in a dimensional Hilbert space, and it becomes a highly entangled state of three qubits, alpha 0, 0, 0 plus beta 1, 1, 1. So as you can see, you can recognize now what we will call the, uh, the, the code word. So the zero in the original qubit will become vector zero, zero, zero in the encoded space, and one will become one, one, one. So think about it this way. So I have, I have a two-dimensional Hilbert space associated with my state, and now I'm just going to insert this two-dimensional Hilbert space into eight-dimensional Hilbert space. So it becomes a coding subspace. So at this point, now we are, um, after this operation, when you are here, uh, your mathematical uh, sort of intuition should see eight-dimensional Hilbert space and uh, in that a-dimensional Hilbert space, you have two-dimensional coding space, which is spanned by two basis vectors, 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1. And uh, some unknown vector psi, which is of the form alpha 0 plus beta 1, is, is there in, in, in that state, in, in that subspace here. Um, it, it becomes alpha 0, 0, 0 plus beta 1, 1, 1. So we call it encoded version of, of this state. Now, errors happen. So we are moving now to the second segment. We have three qubits here, and four things can happen. So we, of course, it, it, we assume that we assume that there is a, a completely positive map, uh, which is uh, defined by the four Krauss operators, or four errors. So the one is that no error happens. So that's that's the situation where nothing happens to our three qubits. Then E1 is um, describes the error on the bit flip error on the first qubit, E2 the bit flip error on the second qubit, and E3 as you can see the bit flip error on the third qubit. Now <coughs> let's let's take a look how those errors modify the code subspace. So as you can see, E0, of course, doesn't do anything to the code subspace, so that's fine. The, the whole subspace is, uh, is intact. But then E1, which is a bit flip on the first um, qubit, takes the whole code subspace and moves it to an orthogonal subspace, which is spun by vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, right? So we just apply the bit flip to the, to the first qubit. So you can see the, the result of E1 is 
shifting the whole subspace without modifying, without you know doing anything. It's a nice unitary operation, which when you when you sort of restrict it to the input being this being vectors from the code space, the whole code space is then shifted to the other, which is orthogonal to it. Then E2 does a similar job. It just takes the whole code subspace and uh, generates um, and shifts it into a, an orthogonal subspace, which is spanned by vector 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And uh, E3 does a similar job, right? So as you can see that we have three non-trivial errors here, and each of them takes the original code space into a subspace, which is uh, called error subspace, which is, uh, and, and all of them are mutually orthogonal. So in principle, you can distinguish where is your state at this point, right? Um, because uh, we can perform the measurement that will allow us to differentiate between those different orthogonal subspaces. We want to figure out at this point which error happened. And uh, we would like, once we know it, we can reverse the, the whole operation, right? So if you just somehow figure out that it was E2 that happened, then you can just simply apply again the bit flip to the second qubit and you just reverse this arrow and you are back into the coding space. And in order to find out which error happened, then indeed we perform the measurements. In fact, we perform the two measurements, one uh, that will differentiate between um, those two subspaces. So we look at the two four-dimensional subspaces and the other measurement that will just differentiate between those two subspaces. So let, let me just um, show you how we implement this measurement. This is, this is called like error syndrome, finding out which particular error happened. That the, uh, you call this is an error syndrome. You'll find out what actually happened in the system. And uh, the measurement, the, the, the first one, which can distinguish between the subspace where the bit values in the basis states on the first two qubits are identical or not identical is constructed by the two control node gates acting on auxiliary qubits. So what you do, you just simply take the first two qubits as your control qubits. You uh, then take a target qubit initially in state zero. You apply two control node gates and uh, if um, you see the outcome zero, that means either those two qubits are in state zero, zero, or in state one, one, in which case you, know, you flipped uh, the, the target qubit twice. So in other words, whenever you see zero as the outcome of what we call here S1 measurement, that means that the, the entries in the basis state, so the, the the state here is identical, either 0, 0, or 1, 1. And, you know, of course, the third qubit could be anything. So this particular measurement here projects on the subspace, which is spanned by 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and uh, the orthogonal subspace. So by Performing this measurement, you can distinguish between whether I, are you here or are you here. I mean, like, is your state located somewhere on this side or on this side? And by the same token, by the same line of argument, you check the parity of the second and the third qubit. And then you can just figure out <coughs> whether are you in this subspace here, in this four-dimensional subspace, or are you in this four-dimensional subspace? So suppose the error happened in the second qubit, so you have a bit flip on the second qubit. So in which case <coughs> we are here, so you can see in which case the, the S1 measurement will give you the value 1, 
because you are located in this subspace here and S2 will also give you one. So uh, you can see that uh, knowing the two outcomes, you can identify in which subspace is your state. So you can identify which particular error happened. So we can, we can construct a very simple lookup table. So when, we, when two outcomes are 0, 0, so we have S1 is equal to 0 and S2 is equal to 0, then nothing happened. You are sitting in this subspace here. And then, for example, if uh, S1 is equal to 1 and S2 is equal to 0, so S1 is equal to 1, S2 is equal to 0, then you know that the first qubit was affected. So that's the case here. So you had a bit flip on the first qubit. So this gives you the error syndrome, the value of S1, S2, and from the error syndrome you can figure out what actually happened in the system. And then that allows you to correct the error. So at this point you simply read the, the syndrome and reset the state to the original value, to the, back to the coding space. So you shift the error subspace back into the code subspace and then uh, once this is done, of course, then you just decode the state, which is like reverse of this operation, and uh, you go back into your original state. So this is how, how it works. You have encoding. I hope you see how unknown quantum state can then be mapped into a... Um, state in higher dimensional Hilbert space. So, so the whole two-dimensional Hilbert space associated with the original qubit becomes two-dimensional code space in some higher dimensional Hilbert space. And the, the, the good thing is now that the state is spread over a number of qubits. In this case, the state of one qubit is spread over three qubits. So that means that if anything happens to one particular qubit, we have this redundancy. We can we can figure out what happened and try to reset it. And then, uh, as you can see, we have, uh, we assume, of course, here a rather artificial, completely positive map. Um, but, but, you know, we have to start somewhere. We have to, um, we have to show that we can deal at least with uh, bit flip errors. And uh, we can see that those errors actually shift the coding space into mutually orthogonal subspaces. So once we can figure out what happened, we can really just reset the whole thing. And we just, in order to find out what happened, we, we bring ancillary qubits. In this case, we just bring two more qubits and we perform those measurements. But those measurements are gentle kind of measurements, right? So they, they sort of differentiate between the subspaces. So you search where is your state, which particular uh, subspace is your state residing, the, the, the one that, uh, you know, after the error by bisecting your Hilbert space, this higher dimensional Hilbert space. So first you, you look at uh, the result of the S1 measurement, which somehow bisects the Hilbert space into those two four dimensional subspaces. So now you know whether it's on this side or on this side. And then you have S2 measurement, which is another error syndrome, which tells you, are you on this side or this side? So this is just another bisection of the Hilbert space. And then um, you just uh, do the corrections. By the way, um, even though I said you measure, it doesn't have to be the measurement per se. You can have a unitary operation here, uh, which is uh, conditional unitary of some sort, where basically it says, OK, if 0, 0, then uh, do nothing. If uh, 0, 1, then apply this unitary. So you, you see it's somehow controlled unitary operation. So that could be uh, done by one big unitary operation. Doesn't have to be a measurement per se. But you know, if you prefer to think about the measurement, that's also fine. And then uh, once you reset the whole thing to the original uh, code space, the decoding gets you back to the original state.